Hey there, I'm JJ. Um, wanted to make this video. I'm, I've done a lot of videos because this was our first litter ever with our boxer, and um, there was a lot of things we didn't know. So um, I also did a lot of research on um, on the internet, and I did a lot of looking for videos on YouTube, and I didn't really find too many videos that kind of like really shared stories or talked about whelping boxes in depth talked about the labor signs in depth, so that's why I want to do this one. This one is signs of labor and delivery. Um, the things that you want to look for when your dog goes into labor is um, you're going to notice, like when our dog went into labor, um, it was like 10.30 at night, and she was panting really heavy. I had thought she was in labor before, but um, she wasn't. So this time around, I wanted to watch her for like a good hour and a half to make sure that it was consistent and steady, and it was, so we knew that it was actually real. So um, she was doing a lot of panting, really, really heavy breathing, and it was consistent, consistent throughout the whole entire process until she delivered. So, um, and another thing, too, that you'll notice, I don't know how close your boxer is with you guys. Normally, boxers are really close with their owners. I mean, they're just the best companion dogs ever. But um, <clears throat> she was really, really needy of us, like, especially when she was in labor. Um, she any, Anywhere that I would go, she would go. Like, she didn't want me out of her side. So when she labored for so long, in the other video, I was talking about her whole story. Um, I basically made a room, um, made myself a little bed on the floor, and, and I stayed with her for two nights, sleeping on the floor, <laughs> making sure that she was okay and trying to comfort her. So... Okay, so let's talk about signs. Um, they start panting heavy, breathing heavy. They will not eat and drink. Um, you can offer them water, though, because I definitely did give Shelby a little bit of water because I thought I was worried that she was going to get dehydrated. So I gave her water, um, but she definitely wouldn't eat anything. And then, like I said, the breathing heavy. And then another thing, another really good thing to do is, like in her last week, so dogs are pregnant for eight weeks, but in her last week or last two weeks before she delivers, it's a good idea to check her temperature at least twice a day rectally um, and with a digital uh, thermometer. So basically you'll check her temp temperature and you'll realize that it's about 100 to 102. Now when they go into labor, it's going to drop significantly. So it'll go down to about 98.1 and it'll stay steady like that until she actually delivers all, their ba all the babies. So those are the things to look for. Um, what else can I think of? Um, in the other video, I talked about uh, making sure that your dog's not in distress during the labor and stuff like that. Um, she was really relaxed other than, you know, heavy labor and active labor. She didn't seem like she was in any distress. <clears throat> but signs of that would be like if you see your dog pushing, and you can see where her vagina is in that area, you can actually see the puppy, a big lump, and you can see the puppy pushing through. If you feel it and it's hard and you see it looks larger than ever, then there's a puppy there. You can sometimes open it and you'll see the little feet or the head. All my babies were breached, so I always saw little feet. But you can check her. It's good to do that, too, I think. Um, <clears throat> if you see her pushing a lot and it's like half an hour to an hour and she hasn't pushed that baby out, that's a problem. So I think that you need to call your vet right away and, you know, ensure that, the puppy's not like stuck in, because if they get stuck in the birth canal, they'll stop breathing and they can suffocate. So, and that's a scary thing. So, you definitely want to call your vet. So, always have your vet on hand. Let them know your dog went into labor and touch base with them and let them know. So, um, and then they should deliver a puppy every half hour um, to an hour, all the way up to four hours. Um, you don't want it to go to more than four hours, like what happened to us. And in my other video, I talked about that. Um, you shouldn't. Um, but like I said, if you don't see that there's a puppy stuck or the dog looks distressed, then I wouldn't freak out. I really think that they know what to do, and naturally it's going to happen. So, like, our dog ended up having a C-section, which I mentioned that in the other video, but in the end, I don't really think she needed it. I really think that um, a little bit more time, she would have delivered all the babies, and there were no puppies stuck in the birth canal, so that was a good sign that she, you know, wasn't trying to push anything out. I really think she was just relaxed and trying to have her baby, so... So those are the key things to look for. So, um, oh, and another thing, um, when a puppy's born, they will, sometimes they'll deliver a sack right after it, so you want to keep an eye on that, too. And I would recommend getting a little piece of paper, writing down the time that every puppy came out. Um, that way you can track it, so you know you're not over four hours. But um, the placenta does come out after the puppy's born and your dog will eat it, so it's, it's kind of gross, but it is what it is, and hey, I think it's high in protein is what I heard, but she will eat it, she will digest it, and let her do it, and then 
she'll go about cleaning her dog and ripping the um, umbilical cord and all that stuff too. So um, that's all I can think of. Oh, and have your supplies ready. Like have some gloves, lots of fresh towels, get a pair of um, sutured scissors to cut the umbilical cord in case your dog can't get it off because sometimes they do have a difficult time if it's their first litter. I mean, it does kick in, but it can happen. So um, what else can I think of? That's pretty much it. So just really keep an eye on her and just really love on her because it's a hard time, just like it is for women. So you have to remember that when your dog's um, delivering because you want to be supportive and be there for them. So, so anyway, that's all I have for you, and um, best of luck. Oh, and when you have your babies, make sure you keep them in a nice, warm area. You don't want any drafts because if it's too cold in there, the puppies can die. So you want to keep their body temperature nice and warm. And what we did was, I'll look up here, I don't know if you can see, but we did a little, um, we covered the vent up. This is really our theater room, but we covered the vent up to prevent um, the air from directly going onto them. So that helps. So those are little things that you can do to keep your puppy safe and warm and happy. And so that's it. So good luck to you guys. Uh, would love to see and hear of your boxer litters, whatever you're expecting. It would be great. So share with me if you feel free to. So all right, you guys have a fabulous day. Bye.